What's up guys? Dan from Create Minis here. Today we're painting Captain Rex. Before we get into it, I'd like to give a special shout out to our first official patron, Hal Martin. I know he's here for the groovy beats, so let's kick it off for him. Captain Rex comes with the option of building him in either his Phase 1 or Phase 2 armor. That is, unless you've got luck like Lando in a hand of Sabacc, and you get two Phase 1 helmets like I did when I opened this box. Luckily, I had an extra Phase 2 helmet laying around, so I could throw both of these away. With that hiccup behind us, start by cleaning the mold lines off of the model. Then, dry fit the model for priming. Here's that pesky Phase 1 helmet that came in the box. I'll replace it with a Phase 2 helmet, but if you're a person of culture, feel free to keep whichever one you like. Now, take a dab of super glue, apply it to a base, not too strong, you want to break it off after priming. I begin by priming just the lower legs of the model. I prime them in a matte white. Then I'll prime the torso separately. I do this so that way I get primer in behind where the legs would be. After I get that part primed, I'll slide the legs back in and continue to prime the entire model. The primer I use is a 2 times matte white primer that you find at your local hardware store. Also, I prepared the base in advance so that way I can prime it at the same time. If you want to see how I do the bases, check out my video link above. Now with Rex completely dry, I'll take a little bit of Apothecary White Contrast Paint and I'll cover all of the white parts of the model. Make sure to get a nice even coat over the entire model, and then watch where the contrast paint begins to pool. If it pools in a flat space or some unnatural area, take your paintbrush and wick it away. Take particular care on the helmet. Take a nice even coverage, and then go back over it in any of the areas that the pigment has pooled up in some of the small details Take your brush and wick it away. You don't want to obscure all this detailing because you've got too much paint in the area. Now you can see why I prefer to assemble this particular model after painting. Disassemble it and get ready to paint all the little black areas on the model. With some black on the palette, we're going to begin painting behind the legs. We disassemble the model and put a nice even coat here. Once the legs are back on it, it'll be extremely hard to reach this area with a brush. Now move on to the areas around the plates of armor on the legs and the arms. Be careful here not to get too much black paint onto the white armor panels. If you do happen to get some though, we'll be able to clean it up in the next step. Now with everything below the waist painted, 
we can glue the torso to the legs. For this, I use a little bit of gel super glue. Now, start to line in the areas under the underarms. Remember this little seam in the panel, and then color in everything black that'll be underneath the arm itself. Remember to paint underneath the shoulder pad. After doing so, begin by lining in the entire shoulder pad itself, and then painting it black. Thinning your paints just a little bit more during this step allows you to easily outline the panel and allows the paint to flow into the crevice. I use a similar technique for all of the spaces in between the arms. You see the panels are very close together so a fine tip brush and a little bit of thin down paint allows the paint to flow in between the two and kind of pool up in the crevice. With all of the black detailing done, we can now glue the model together. Using some super glue, we can assemble the torso and the arms. Now it's time to highlight the model and touch it up. And to do this, I'll take white, but then I'll add just a drop of glaze medium to it and mix it together. This will both thin the paint and also slow the drying time, allowing us to manipulate it a little bit more freely and put it more where we want it. The result is much thinner coats, but a smoother finish. So begin by applying and touching up the little areas where you may have had black run over onto the white panels. Then, from the top down, begin to highlight the areas you want the brightest. Imagine where the light would be hitting the panels. Continue this effect over all of the nice, big, flat panels on the armor. You'll see the contrast paint sometimes pulls up in weird areas, and this will allow you to blend it back to you nicely. Continue going over the model and all of the flat panels until you reach a brightness level that you deem fit.
If you're enjoying this video and want more content like it, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. Doing so will help me and help expose this to a larger audience. Now we'll take the black, or if you'd like a lighter cloak, the German gray, and paint in the rest of the cloak itself. Next, we'll start to add some color, and for this, I'm going to use Dark Blue by Viejo. Start by painting all of the raised edges on the pauldron. Be careful not to make your paint too thin at this point, because it may wash off into the creases in between. You want to strictly paint the tops of the pauldron. Let that dry and then add a second coat. Now, move on to the striping along the cloak on the bottom. Follow the lines, being careful not to overlap too much, but whatever you do overlap, clean up with the base color that you used, whether it's black or dark gray, and frame it in. Don't be afraid to always go back and clean up any lines that might not be to your liking. Now let's add some blue detailing to the front. Catch his little kneecaps here, and then we're going to add some blue striping onto the arms. Start with a nice thin line, and then work your way out, increasing the thickness of that line to whatever you'd like. I find that if you try and start from the center, and work your way out, you can make the line straighter and a lot more consistent that way. Slowly, working from left to right, keep increasing the thickness and straightness of your line. Now remember, not every line on the stripe has to line up on each panel. Naturally, his arm would be turned and the lines would shift a little bit. It's not going to be perfect all the way across. Now here I noticed I got a little carried away and I painted too many of the panels blue. Now mistakes happen and it's important to know that as long as you're using thin coats you can always go back and touch up any areas you may not like. So for this I painted them back to the original base color black, leaving only the shoulder pauldron blue. Now, let's throw a little black around the soles of the feet. 
helping to differentiate them from the bottom of the shoe and the ground. Remember that phase two helmet I had laying around? Well, here it is. Start by painting the stripes around the border of the visor and down the center of the helmet. Thin your paints and try and keep as good of a point on your brush as possible. Lightly make nice thin lines and increase the width as you paint. Border the visor in, and then color the stripe along the top side of the helmet. Now if you're feeling confident, take some thin black paint and paint in the visor. Now why wouldn't you be? You've made it this far. But if you're looking for a quick and easy trick, you can take some Nuln Oil on your brush and dab it into the recessed area. It will pool up here and then let it dry before handling it anymore and you'll have a nice blacked in visor. Now you may have noticed the two little markings on top of his helmet have appeared suddenly. Well, of course, it was extremely out of focus when I filmed this because I'm an amateur, so mistakes happen. Basically what you'll do here is you're going to paint it just like you painted the stripes on the front of the helmet itself. Then down your paint, take your time, and make nice little line. Take your time and clean up any edges that you need with white. If you need to try over, go ahead and thinly coat with white like we showed, and then paint again. Do the same with the underside of the visor here. Add some blue underneath there to kind of frame it in, and block out any of the null oil that may have washed up. Now thin down your black paint some more, and you can see here how the paint kind of wicks into the recessed areas there. Be careful and take your time. Any little bit of an overage can be covered up with white. Take your white mixture and you can see a little bit of staining from the normal oil there. Just dab it and cover it up. He's looking clean, almost too clean. So let's add a little bit of weathering here. For starters, we're gonna take just a little bit of gun metal and dry brush it onto the guns themselves and any of the little black parts of the armor you deem fit. Lastly, you don't want him to look like he just came off the production line. So take a tiny piece of sponge and a little bit of white paint and gently dab onto the blue stripes. This will create a paint chipping effect and make him look a little more realistic. For a final touch, we're going to take some German Grey and highlight some of the flat panels that don't really have any depth to them. Outline them slightly, just to give them a little bit of a highlighted effect. Add it to a base, ideas for that were linked earlier in the video or in the description below, and then we'll call it a day. Captain Rex is done and ready for the next fight. So that's it guys, now you're ready to take out some clankers and have Captain Rex lead your army to victory. Special shout out to Hal Martin, my first patron. If you want to be like him and support the channel, I've got a link down below. On there, I put some updates what I'm working on outside this channel, updates on future videos, 
you get chances to communicate with me and even have a direct impact on what comes up later. If you like the channel, subscribe. Give me a comment down below of things that I can improve on or maybe some figures that you want to see painted in the future. Until then, like, spread the word, and as always, keep creating.